Hey guys, Denver Coder back with episode 5 of the Build a WordPress website series. Um, when we left off last time, we had just installed our theme, um, and I believe that's where we ended off. Um, so now, really, we have a few steps left to finish up this website. We have to customize the theme to make it our own, which is what we're going to do in this video. So. I'm at the website and I've got my I've got the website out here I've got the dashboard over here so this is how the theme looked when we installed it um, all these images came with the theme so we have to change these up and make them our own so when I do a website like this, I like to just start from the top and then work my way down. So we've already got this section over here. Um, it says create your menu here, so we need to create a menu. So I think that's where we're going to start out. So to create the menu, um, you go into your dashboard, go to appearance and menus. So your pages will be over here and your menus will be over here. Now this is the default menu I believe that came with it and what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna create a new one I'm gonna call this navbar create and now what you do is you just you click on one of these or both of these um, you can actually select all of them um, we don't need the sample page we're just gonna do the home for now so you click on home and then you click add to menu <clears throat> and it'll just drop it over here and now you want this to be your primary menu this theme only comes with one menu um, some themes will have a primary menu and then a secondary menu which will be like your footer menu so I'm gonna save that now if I go back in here and refresh should see home up here so that's how we get back to this page or I guess our page um, yeah so let's go ahead and just create our pages I'm gonna delete the sample page we've already got our home page and it looks to me like yeah this is just a dummy home page I created for the last time just gonna delete everything delete all the content out of that and hit update so we just have a blank page now you'll see what happened when I click this <clears throat> I told it to go home and it's actually going to my home page and one of the settings in here under settings reading So you see right here it says front page displays your latest posts and then you have an option to display a static page which that's what we want to do we want to display a static page so I'm going to click that and then we select our front page and our post page I'm going to select home for now and I'm going to save it so now when somebody goes to the website they come here and then when you click this button you're actually going to our our home page instead of the most recent posts so we need to set a post page now so let's create our post page I usually just a uh, personal preference I call my post page blog um, and another good uh, another good thing to do is just you want to just like type a quick message into the page so you can easily identify it and we're gonna hit publish now we're gonna go back to appearance menus and I'm probably doing this in the wrong order it's probably better just to create all the pages 
I'm going to click blog. I'm going to click add to menu. So it adds the blog to the menu. And then I'm going to hit save. And when I go back here and refresh this, I'll have a blog after that. So I've got home and blog. If I click this blog, it'll take us to that blog page we just created. So you can see right here, blog, this is the blog. So um, I just wanted to show you guys that that's how you do that. Um, so let's just go ahead and create the rest of our pages. Um, for a basic website, you just want to have, um, I usually have a home, about, And there's something I want to fix real quick. You see how this permalink right here for this page, it says HTTP liveWebSEO.com forward slash about. I don't know if I did this in the last video, but what I want to do is anytime we're on the blog page, I want to have the blog um, be in the permalink. So if I create a new post, Let's just see if we've got this configured right. Yeah, so it's it's already I've already got it set up correctly. So you see how this has livewebseo.com forward slash blog and then forward slash and then the name of the post, which is this right here. Um, I just like to have that. Like all the other pages, I can just go livewebseo.com forward slash about, livewebseo.com forward slash contact. But for my blog, just a personal preference thing. I like to have the little blog subfolder. That way it's just its own like separate self-contained unit. So go back in here. We'll create our other pages. So we've got about blog home. We need to create a contact. And I think that's all we're going to do for this tutorial series. We're not going to get too fancy with this. So i got my four pages. I'm going to go back down to menus. going to add my contact and about. When you add these, they usually just add them to the bottom. You can drag these around. So I usually have the about page second. I have home about. Then I usually do my blog and then I do the contact page. The main reason for that is I like to have the contact page on the end. So no matter how many pages I have in my menu, I like to always have the contact be last. And then of course I always like to have the home to be first. And then most people when they go to your website, they want to know two things. They want to know about you. They want to know who you are and what you do. And they want to read your blog. Um, so I like to have those two right after the home page. So and then any additional pages that I would have, I would put in here between the blog and the contact. So if I had a portfolio page, I'd put that in here. If I had a YouTube videos page, I'd put that in between these two. Um, and like I said, that's just, all this is pretty much personal preference. There's no real right, right or wrong way to do it. Um, by convention, the home page is usually the first link, but that's about the only convention I'm aware of. Okay, so now you see I've got my, my menu and so this whole top bar is pretty much done now. It's pretty cool if I scroll this, you'll see how it kind of turns opaque and then that'll stay there as they scroll down the page. So that's pretty neat. Um, so right now, let's go ahead and do something with this background image. Um, you see how these these words fly in. There's a slider at work here. So if I go to plugins and Sydney toolbox. Sometimes it's hard to find the uh, like every theme like puts stuff in different places in the the bar there. Okay, so we're in the customizer. This is called the customizer. So to get to this, when you're on a page, so if I come out here and this is I'm on the home page, you can see this customize button here. Most themes have that. 
you click that and then what will differ is the different um, options you'll have in here will be different for each um, each theme you use so you run through these and we're trying to find this background image so right there is the header slider so it's got a slider speed of 4000 which is milliseconds so it's four seconds um, and then you see you've got the first slide is right there and the second slide is there so those are the two slides and then here's the title for the first slide subtitle for the first slide and then the subtitle title and subtitle for the second slider here and you can see you've got third fourth fifth and then a call to action which is this click to begin button so you can have up to five slides um, it doesn't look like you can add any more than that but that's pretty standard you wouldn't want to have 30 slides on the front page because you don't want people to stay on your front page and look at slides for a really long time so what I'm gonna do is remove that and I'm gonna remove that and you'll see that these will be gone so now there's nothing there so now we gotta go grab two really big nice looking images for those two slides so what I'll do there's a website called Pixabay it's pretty much where I get 99% of my images so you just go here and you do a search and so these this top row you see how they all have a shutterstock um, watermark those are the, the ones you have to pay for and you'll see up here it says sponsored images so that that always gets me I mean sometimes I'll go in here and I'll search for something and I'll go oh that's really cool and I'll click it and it'll take you to shutterstock and you gotta pay like 35 bucks just to use that picture but anything below this kind of yellow border all of these are free so so if our website is about live web SEO or helping people um, you know streamline their websites and such you know this would be a good image I like that one so we're gonna throw that one up there so you just go here to you to log in first and then <clears throat> you go to free download we want the largest we possibly can get so I'm gonna take the original which as you can see it's 3000 by 2023 and download that it's probably this huge file Yeah, so it's 1.2 megabytes. So actually, I'm gonna I'm gonna grab the large. That one is yes, yeah, 479 kilobytes. That's pretty good for a slider image. So now we're just gonna pop back over to our website. Um, so the first slide, upload your first image for the slider. I'm going to select image then I'm going to click on upload files I'm going to click select files and then I'm going to find that file and open it. So once it's down, done downloading or uploading I guess um, I'm going to delete the title and I put my alt text. I'm going to put uh, computer work station uh, dual monitor. I'm going to click choose image so now that's there and in a second yep you should see that pop in. Now this problem is this background is really bright um, a lot of white and stuff so we're gonna have to make this text dark. So I'm going to grab the second slide now. Oops. So I mean, just finding images like this is what I spend a lot of my time on when I'm 
This guy looks really worried. I spent a lot of time looking for images. Um, it's a lot of fun, but I mean, it's it can be time consuming, and um, you know, you want to get it to look nice. But um, so this one right here, this kind of is a cool image because it's basically just a bunch of gears, so it's pretty generic. But you know, it says right here, gears, movement, machine, search engine optimization. So um, we can download that, and then we can just explain it um, through the text. Wow, that's a big, it's a big image. So this is a 2.8 megabyte file. It's even bigger than the other one was when it was at the original size. Um, if you see here, so size on disk 2.9 megabytes. So that's just, that's unacceptable. But I really want to use this image, and so that brings a good time to show you guys uh, how I edit my, edit my images. Um, I've got this program that I really like called Pixelmator. I also have uh, Affinity Designer. Affinity Designer, I think, was a $50 program. I think Pixelmator was 10 bucks, something like that, but you get it from the Mac store. Um, so Affinity Designer, I have a very limited use for this. This this one is like, uh, it's basically a Photoshop replacement. I don't know how to do all the fancy editing and like I don't know what any of these buttons do. I use this for one purpose and one purpose only. Um, a lot of times when I get artwork commissioned, like I have somebody make a logo for me or something, they'll they'll give me an AI file, which is an Adobe Illustrator file. Well, I have no way to open an Adobe Illustrator file. Um, you, you have to use Photoshop. But the problem is, is I don't use Photoshop enough to pay $20 a month for it. I can't afford to pay $240 a year for a program that I use you know, just once, once a month, basically. So I bought the Affinity Designer because it's $50 and it was just a flat fee. I could you know, have this program for the next 50 years and not have to pay another penny because of the fact that I use it in such a limited way. Um, I don't even care about upgrading to a new version or anything. I'll keep this version for, it works for exactly what I need it to do. And basically all I do with it is I use it to convert my AI images um, just into PNGs or JPEGs or whatever. So I can just drag this logo in here. And it'll open it up for me. I know you can't see that because it's white on a white background, but if you see, I don't even know how to use this. Let's see if you do that, the the logo's there. It's just white on white. So, so anyways, I, I basically do that. I drag a file into here. I go to file. I go to export. Then I export it as a PNG and I can resize it or whatever and I hit export and that's literally all I use this for I don't use it for anything else I don't do any editing in it because I just don't understand how to use it now Pixelmator is really simple it's kind of got a, a Microsoft paint feel to it you know you've got your little toolbar over here this layer stuff I don't even know how to really use that very well um, but I do know how to do a lot of stuff in here. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to open that image that we just downloaded. Gears. So you can see this checkerboard pattern in the background. That means that this is a transparent background. So this image, no matter what background you put on it or put it on, that background color will show through. So that's pretty cool. Um, but what I'm going to do is I've, I've just imported it here. All I'm going to do is I'm going to export it. Export for web. And what that does is it'll basically give you the optimum settings to export it for the web. And let's see, get rid of these. So... See that right there is 
it's 1.1 megabytes. That's still a little too big, and that's at 100% quality. Now you see, as you turn this quality down, the file size goes down pretty drastically. And so right about there, I start noticing a difference in the image. I mean, you can see it's like, if you look at these uh, edges right here, it's like pretty crisp. But as I go down, you can see it gets kind of choppy and gross looking. So what I want to do is I want to get this so that it looks nice but it's a little bit smaller file size. So I'm gonna go, I think, at about 80%. So that's 361 kilobytes, that's acceptable. And you can see it's really not that much different. So once, once that's all done, you just click Next. Um, I'm just gonna call it Gears JPEG, and then you hit Export. And it exports it, and then I close this and this just asking me if I want to save the work I've done to this, and I don't. I want to keep that, you know, how it was when I downloaded it. So I've got that one now. So I'm going to go to my second slide, select image, upload files, select files, um, just the plain gears one. Uh, same deal. Once it's done downloading, I'm going to delete the title, and I'm just going to call it gears. I'm going to call it Bunch of Gears. Okay. So now that's in there. So now you can see you've got the first slide comes out. Four seconds later, second slide. Four seconds goes by, first slide again. So that's good. So now we want to change this text. Um, I'm going to actually increase this a bit. I'm just going to put it to 5,000, so five seconds. And then I'm going to go welcome to live web SEO. And then I'm going to put um, um, Ah. See how that looks when it comes around. That's all right. I'm not the greatest like tagline creator. Um, usually I would spend a lot of time thinking about this and getting it right, but for the purposes of doing an instructional video, I don't want to sit here for 50 minutes while I try to get the text just right. So. Um, I'm going to leave that ready to begin your journey. Click the button below. We're just going to leave all that. and I'm going to hit save and publish. So now, like I said before, you've got this white text now. And you can't really see it. So what we're going to do is we're going to find header area header type full screen slider and we're gonna go header slider we are already in there header image so this header image this is for the other pages like if you go to the about page you can see this guy sitting down right here and it's um, got his head cut off um, that's odd but so menu style, okay, we don't have any options in there. What I'm looking for is I'm looking for the typography options, um, fonts, mainly font color. Um, colors, okay, so let's go back to our home page because the cool thing about this customizer is you can make your changes over here and they'll update live over here and it's a good way to work. That way you don't have to keep refreshing the page and, and everything you can just do this work and so you see right here site title and it's white I want to just make it like a kind of a dark gray except for I'll probably have to change it on the uh... okay so that's the site title that's that right there let's make the site title black let's see that's 
let's get this color. I have a little tool right here. This is called uh, Colorzilla. You click on that, click on pick color from page. When I put my mouse over that and click it, it'll copy that color to the clipboard. So if I want this to be the same color as that button, all I have to do is just click here and then highlight that and then just hit paste. So that'll make that the same color as that. And then I want to make the site description that same color as well. Okay. So let's see, uh, header slider text. That's what we're looking for. I'm going to make this a dark. Let's see, that's not going to work either. So we'll just go ahead and make the header slider text the same color as the button. I think that stands out pretty good and it meshes with the button. So I should warn you right now, this is going to be a functional website. It's not going to be the prettiest website you've ever seen in your life. There's just a lot of design decisions you have to make and they're really hard to make on the fly. And I mean, like I, like I say in all my videos, I could have gone through and done this whole thing. Um, you know, I could have gone through and spent hours and hours and hours making all this stuff great and then cutting it down into a, like a 30 minute video and then showing you guys but the whole point of this was supposed to be that you know I'm not skipping any steps I'm not um, you know cutting any corners I'm not taking seven hours of video and condensing it down to a half an hour so I click save and publish and so you'll see that's that's done um, so now I'm going to close that. So this is our home page. We got to change these links as well because they're hard to see. Mm, colors. Let's see. I'm just going to, yeah, so. I guess we'll just go with our funny color. The cool thing about this theme is that once you scroll down a bit, you'll see that. Um, so now it's a lot easier to read those menu items. <clears throat> okay, so that's basically our our welcome page or our, our hero or um, our landing page. Um, I'm going to cut this video here um, and then when we come back we'll start working on the rest of the site. But at least we've got this done and you know it looks okay. Um, actually one more thing I want to do before we go. So we're working on our website live on the internet which is something that normally you wouldn't do. Um, when I develop my websites I use AMPS and it basically allows me to create a local version of all my blogs. So if you go in here, you can see I've got my Denver Coder, dev.denvercoder.com. And if I go here, you can see this, this is actually on my computer. It's not live on the internet. Nobody can see this. So when I'm working in here, I can do whatever I want and nobody can see what I'm doing. But when you're out here working live on the internet like we are, anybody can come to this website. Like you, you're you watching this video in the future could come to this website and you could see the work in progress. And you know, if you're doing a site for a client, then you want to start promoting the website right away. You want to start letting the search engines index the site, but you don't want people coming to it and seeing it look unfinished and crappy. So what we're going to do real quick is we're just going to install a quick plugin and we're going to go to plugins, we're going to go to add new, we're going to search for, oops, so I'm looking for Looking for a plugin. I 
I use this one all the time. Here it is. I use this one all the time, but it's one of those things where you download it, you leave it in your project, and you you know you never have to go download it again. So this is the one that I like to use. It's made by Seed Pod, Seed Prod. Um, it's got five stars. It's got two hundred thousand plus active installs. So you're gonna click install now, and then you're gonna activate the plugin. So you see right here, coming soon page and maintenance mode by Seed Prod. You're gonna click settings. So you've got disabled, enable coming soon mode, enable maintenance mode. Now the difference between the coming soon and the maintenance mode is the coming soon mode, um, that's if the, the website is brand new and there's nothing there existing currently and people aren't used to going to it and seeing it, um, you just want to select that one because you know um, people aren't probably going to even know about the site yet. And then this maintenance mode, this one is for, say you have a website that's really popular and you have like 10,000 visitors and a month or whatever and you're doing a major upgrade and you don't want people in the site because they could break something. So if somebody's trying to, um, if t somebody's doing something and they're writing to the database when you're trying to modify it, you know, you could create a problem. and so you want to just keep everybody out of the site, but you want them to let them know, like, hey, the site's not broken, it's not down, we're just doing some scheduled maintenance. And usually, you know, you would send out an email to all of your subscribers saying, hey, I'm going to be doing maintenance from 2 a.m. to 4 a.m. Sunday morning or whatever. Um, so you'd click that one. So we're going to use the coming soon mode because that's what we're doing. We're, we have a website that's coming soon. So now you can select a logo. Um, and all I'm going to do is just select one of the ones that we already have this guy. I'm going to change the size to large. I'm going to click insert into post. Headline, I'm going to say uh, live web SEO is corner. Stay tuned. And then what I like to do in, in here is just if if I've got somebody who heard about my site or they they heard I was building the site and they come to this site, I want them to at least be able to get in contact with me because you know I might have business lined up already. Um, so what I would do here is I would usually just go um, uh, live web SEO contact info. And then I would probably go with email and I'd put and then I would probably put a phone number if I had one that I wanted associated with my business um, and then that's that's about it and then you can actually put something like that. So I can highlight all of this text, I can center it, and then this right here, it says powered by seed prod. So this is a free plugin, you don't have to pay a penny for it, and I've been using this on some of my sites for over a year. Um, all I do is if I'm not like gonna use this, you know, in any time soon, I just disable it, but I leave it installed, just because you never know when you're gonna have to go in and do maintenance. Um, and I just use the free version, the, the pro version I've never even tried. I don't even know what features it offers, but this is a free one. And so what he's, what he's saying here is he's saying, can we show a cool stylish footer credit at the bottom of the page? The bottom, at the bottom of the page. And I always just do that because, I mean, it's a free plugin and it actually is a really cool stylish footer credit. So I'm going to save that. So... The kind of cool thing about this plugin is that once it's saved sometime today, <clears throat> there. So now it's saved. So if I go to this website, I 
I still see the website. And that's because I'm logged in as an admin. You can see right here it says coming soon mode active, but I'm logged in as an admin. So it wants to, it lets you see the site um, when you're logged in. So you can make your changes and whatnot, but I'll show you this. So if I log out, okay. Okay, and then if I go to the website now, so this is what everybody else is gonna see. It's got this picture, live web SEO is right around the corner, stay tuned, live web SEO contact info, email, expected launch date. And then here's that pretty cool, it's not not obtrusive, it's, it's not big, it's kinda nice looking, um, you know, it's just right down there in the corner, and I mean, half the people aren't even gonna see it but if they do I mean if this guy gets a little business from that that's that's pretty cool so I've done this and I've actually put this image because this is the image we're gonna use on the front page of our website so the cool thing is that if people are really excited about this website and they keep coming here and they see this image when they actually when it goes live and they actually get to log in and they'll see this image first thing and then it'll be familiar to them they'll go oh hey you know I know exactly where I am so anyways, um, I'm going to wrap it up for this video, um, and the next video we'll just continue customizing the site. So thanks for watching guys, and uh, if you like my videos, please subscribe. Have a great day.